Frank Phillips came from Iowa to Indian Territory, Oklahoma, in search of a fortune. He found it with a string of 81 straight successful oil wells that pumped out his black gold. After that, the good times rolled for Phillips, his wife Jane, and their son John. He completed construction on his Bartlesville mansion in 1909. According to Jim Goss, the director of the Frank Phillips home, locals saw the Phillips family as outsiders who were stirring up Bartlesville with their ambitious business savvy. Goss says the house was a statement to the community. We are here in Bartlesville to stay, and we want to build something that shows the public that we have a commitment to Bartlesville and that we are going to be contributors to this city. Goss and his wife Kim are our tour guides. Phillips entertained people from all over the world, so these rooms were used a lot. The three-story mansion has 26 rooms, so there is a lot for visitors to see. 95% of all the furniture in the house and the knickknacks, etc., are original to the home. Uh, the granddaughter Elizabeth, who is also known as Betty, gave the home and all of the belongings of Frank and Jane to the state of Oklahoma in 1973. The music room is where they entertained guests. A photo taken back when the Phillipses lived here shows everything in the same place as it is today, including the Weber Grand Concert and player piano. The ornate ceiling plaster and the heavy crown molding are the umbrellas over the dark imported Philippine mahogany seen throughout the home. The original upholstery on furniture remains, as does the gold French damask on the padded walls. The chandelier is Waterford crystal, and so is the one in the adjoining dining room. Here, this table could seat 18 people. They were served on this fine china, handled by servants who were very timely on the delivery of each course. That's because under the table, Mrs. Phillips could tap on an electric button, which would summon the help. And it's interesting because people really did not know how they timed it so well. I imagine some famous people sat at this table. Very famous people from all over the, the world, literally. Uh, Wiley Post, Will Rogers, Elliot Roosevelt were guests here at the home. It is said the Phillipses had guests here most evenings they were home. Liz, we're now moving into the library. And originally, the library was a mirror image of the music room. In 1930, during the middle of the Great Depression, Phillips enlarged this room as part of a half-million-dollar renovation project. Phillips made sure he got national publicity on the project. And as people read about what he was doing and the cost, they were very impressed and felt like Phillips Petroleum must be doing very well, so they continued to invest in the company. And while a show place, this was still, after all, their home. The library has 2,000 books in it, there are another thousand scattered throughout the house. Jane Phillips was a voracious reader and was able to talk to anyone about just about any subject. In here, as you glance up to the ceiling, the artistic plaster work Jane insisted on will catch your gaze. Comfortable, worn seating is scattered throughout. And while this room was likely a cozy winter nesting place, the sunroom was said to be Frank Phillips' favorite. Another picture from the past confirms it is just as they left it. She had tea parties and bridge parties in this room. Very light, very airy. The two floors above the main floor are both elegant and earthy. Up here you will see some built-ins that were way ahead of the times for the early days of Oklahoma. Yes, indeed, this home was a place for guests to get happy. As the lyrics to the music say, Mr. and Mrs. Frank Phillips had a lot of reasons to get happy in 1909 when work was completed on their mansion. The home had all the modern conveniences and was lavishly furnished and decorated. Their only child, John, had claimed to most of the third floor. In 1917, he married and moved out of the home, but two more children would come to live here. Sarah Jane and Mary Frances, both foster children from New York, came to live here when they were three and five years old. This was their room. In fact, it was added for them during a home expansion in 1917. 
Their matching beds had paintings of a magical castle, and the girls are said to have had a magical life here. Kim Goss is our tour guide. This actually was Mary Frank's side of the room, uh -huh. and her dolls are here. Mary Frank was quite a tomboy, so I can imagine she really enjoyed these little cowgirl outfits. The girls had the best toys and the best books. After they were grown, there was another addition to the home. By 1930, when they added the library downstairs, they were both ready to spread out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so they divided the two bedrooms. Jane's bedroom is feminine in every way. Carved wood and plaster detail the walls and ceiling. The furniture is painted in a beautiful French floral design. The original bedding shows Jane even slept luxuriously. Jane's sheets were very beautiful. All of her sheets were handmade. And you can see that they are silk, silk and lace. Wow. She received her breakfast tray every morning after making an intercom call to the staff in the kitchen downstairs. Her chase lounge is where she ate. Afterwards, she would write her daily letters and thank yous. Jane's bathroom was also ultra feminine. The walls and floors are rose Italian marble. There is a hand-painted mirrored ceiling and a Waterford chandelier. All the fixtures are gold-plated. Maids made sure every inch sparkled. Opposite Jane's room is the very masculine room of Frank Phillips. Here animals like this bobcat from his game preserve on the Willow Rock Ranch adorn the room. He was not a hunter, but he always said that as animals died of natural causes out there, that he had them mounted so he could continue to enjoy his investment. He was an early riser, and after breakfast, it was into his manly bathroom, complete with a barber's chair. Frank had the barber chair in here with a barber coming in every morning that he was here at the house, give him a shave, trim if he needed it. A cigar cabinet was next to the toilet, a small refrigerator for beverages and snacks, and he not only had a tub and a shower, but a Turkish bath to take saunas in as well. A shower in the bathroom for guests must have been one visitors raved about. It has 10 shower heads. It's the only one in the house with 10 shower heads. Even Frank's is not this fancy, so they save the best for their guests. There are two rooms for guests furnished like New York hotel rooms in the day. A sitting room connected the two. There were a lot of famous people that stayed in this room, and probably my two favorites on a regular basis were Will Rogers and Wiley Post. The Phillipses enjoyed their guests, but only for so long. You were welcome with open arms. And then on the morning of the third day, when you were eating breakfast, the servants would come up and pack your bags. And when you were done with breakfast, you would find your bags sitting by the front door. 